All right. All right. All right. Marie. Pick it up where we left off. We sure are. And so. Giant, fiery, flaming angels with eyeballs all over. We sure are again, then, aren't we? So. <laughs> Hello, dear listeners of the Mad Scientist Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Cogswell, here with my co-host, Marie Mayhew. What's going on? Happy pre-Halloween. Pre-Halloween. How's it going? Pre-Halloween. Pre-Halloween. It's good. It's good. I always... We were just... Uh, the month cannot get here soon enough, right? I know. I'm so excited. Uh, ever, so, you know that show, Intervention, on TV? <laughs> Yes. So you know how they always do the, the pre-intervention? Yes. I don't know why I think this joke is so funny, but every time that you, every time we used to watch it, me and Katie, and every time the part would come on, it would show pre-intervention, I'd go, ah, the printervention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Because you're just a goo. That's the kind of high-quality comedy you get on the Mad Scientist podcast. You do. Jake. And <sighs> God love our, our Patreon members oh for sticking it out. You're such... <laughs> Such bull mats. Thank God for them. Jake, roll the tape. Welcome to the Mad Scientist Podcast. Okay, Marie. Yeah, what's so, going on? What's the story? So, what's the hap? So last episode... Demons, you say. Demons. Last episode... Demons, you say. Last episode, we ended by talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. the... Hinting at the fall of Satan, also known as mm-hmm. Lucifer. Because uh, mm-hmm. he wasn't Satan. Right, but we're going to get into... We're going to get into that a little bit on this mm-hmm. episode, I think. But, mm-hmm. um, so, okay. So we have these classifications of angels... But there's this idea floating around, which is, well, if, right, like, if if there is a, if there's a God out there who's the, the ultimate good, but then mm-hmm. there's also these angels out there, right, mm-hmm. that are kind of floating around and seem to have similar kinds of powers of as God and, you know, are almost as good as God is. They're his agency, right? Right. Then Acting as an agency, yeah. Right, and, and, and angels are the only ones that humans have any kind of real, real interaction with. Right. Anytime mm-hmm. God acts like there's very few times where God specifically calls out to anyone. Um, most of the time it's an angel messenger or something doing something on God's behest. Yes. Then what is it? To, you know, why? Why would a human or why would an angel, for that matter, not consider the idea that, well, you know, I'm the one doing all the work here? Yes. And why am I doing all the work? Right. Too? What why is the I, point? Why am well, I'm doing all this this work for this inferior product? Right. Well, For these people, these humans. And so that's where we get into this idea of of Satan, of uh, an angel who falls away from God mm-hmm. in some way. Mm-hmm. All right. So the first, uh, probably the most common description of this, and this is kind of an interesting thing. One of the most common descriptions that most people probably know of is found in the book of Revelations. Uh, it's Revelations uh chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. So it it goes like this, quote, Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him, end quote. That is really the classical story of... Satan's Satan and his angels fall from heaven. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is that that comes in the book of Revelation, which is supposed to be a view of the future. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. there's a few uh, there's a few ways to look at this. One is that this is a, uh, a basically history repeating itself. That at the end of time, Satan will again rise up with his angels to overtake heaven. It won't work, and he'll be cast out. And that's kind of that's kind of the uh, the the sort of the the antichrist view, right? That uh, you know Satan mm-hmm. will come to power in the end times, and then you know Christ will throw him down. Uh, another w- reading of this, though, which is kind of interesting and is very similar to Skyrim, is that uh, actually this is a this is a cyclical view of time, that this happens uh-huh. at the end of time and at the beginning of time. That every cycle, the devil. 
uh, Satan and his demons will rise up. Every cycle, God will prevail. And every time that happens, kind of a new age or a new timeline is started. Pretty yes. kind of interesting. I don't know how that's like Skyrim, but okay. Because I'll have to take your okay, word. Okay, because it? in Skyrim, Alduin okay, is the yeah. world eater and he rises up every time and then he gets the best now. It's a whole big thing. Uh, we'll talk about thing. it. We'll talk about it. Anyways. You know what would be excellent for one episode, listeners, is to have like one episode I explained Star Wars just to, 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 to Cogs. You should explain this whole Skyrim thing to me. I really should. Because uh, it's totally, totally fun. It's, it's a game, right? I'm assuming it's a game. It is a game, but it's, it's right, more like a lifestyle, Marie. I was going to say, I know that it's, I know it's very important. I just didn't, you know, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I still have Skylanders. I don't, you know, I, I don't know. It's very okay. good. So oh, good. Uh, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. There have been a couple of fallen angels in history, right? Satan is not the first yeah. one. <laughs> no. So no. Um, there are other stories like this from other places. So for instance, the book of Enoch has the story of uh, the watchers who became, uh, basically became enamored with human women. They use the word enamored, which basically means they like the way human I'm women, they, they like the way human women looked. They seduced them and then they had children. And these mm -hmm. children were, uh, were these horrible uh, kind of uh, giant, terrible things. Right. And so mm -hmm. uh, specifically they talk about, the, the head of this angel class who had sex with human women were Shem, Shemyeza. And then there was the leader, uh, that was the leader Shemyeza, and then Azazel, who was another one. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, it seems like these angels were part of that class who teaches humans uh, art and sciences and things. Specifically because Azazel was specifically rebuked um, in the Book of Enoch by saying that he actually gave humans instructions on how to perform sorceries. Oh. And because of that, uh, Raphael, the archangel, uh, comes down, chains Azazel in the desert, um, and is mm -hmm. then blamed for the corruption of the earth. So there's hmm. that story, right? There's another mm -hmm. story. Um, there's another story in the book of Enoch, Enoch about uh, three fallen angels, Azazel, Azza, and Uza. Again, these were angels who taught human sorcery. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, later were were uh, were actually later still left in heaven, which is quite fascinating. It's kind of interesting. This is like a story of angels teaching humans too much, but then um, still being allowed into heaven by God's forgiveness or something. But then eventually falling. Like it's kind of interesting, right? So, um, so you have this idea about uh, what's the word? You have this idea about uh, angels who decide to have sex with human women creating these monstrosities and then the monstrosities, the women and the demons are all cast out. Yeah. Cause right. it's the chick's fault. It's absolutely. Every single time Marie, you yeah. evil women with your wily ways. That right? must be it. Yeah. Um, and so you have, uh, and they were still making 63 cents on the demons dollar, but whatever, that's cool too. I'm not even going to bring that up. So you had, so you have this idea then that it's, it's a, the, some, mm -hmm. Something to do with the temptation of humans that leads to the formation of, of demons, right? And uh, over time, what kind of gets solidified is that it is specifically uh, Satan's pride that leads to him mm -hmm. being thrown out from heaven. Well, a little bit. Like, I think, yes. I also think that, like, what, 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 like, again, if you look at sort of late, well, maybe not not that much later, but like Milton and the other stories as well, is that what what is his what's Satan's motivation for doing this? What's the the fissure that that takes him away from God's love, right? From he he falls from the light literally, because like his his name, right? Lucifer in can we so can we start talking about that? Absolutely, now? yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. So like Lucifer is like literally is a uh, light bringer, mm -hmm. morning star. He was the most resplendent. Like if you read about him in, in um, books or in, in any of the sort of the literature, he's resplendent. He's literally physically brighter than the other angels. So God's light or love is especially, is especially focused on him. He is 
the, one of the best examples of of what the angel is mm-hmm. and, of, and of God and God's love. And so what would take something like that and and not just like make him envious or make him want to lead somebody astray, but or let all of mankind, womankind, humanity astray, but like what is that like the analogy of that is to is is to become darkness, to lose mm-hmm. to lose the light of God, which is probably also like grief, you know, like to be all of a sudden introduced to this whole other host of emotions that these angels never had any kind of exposure to, right? He also became somewhat human because he he became wrathful. He became jealous. He lost God and became angry. And then finally he fell and he was, and he grieved. He, he now grieves the loss every day of, of not being in God's light anymore, mm-hmm. hypothetically. So I think that that's like one of the most interesting parts about like him and that story and sort of the motivation around him is he, he did not understand from like, you know, Milton and, and, all of the other like revel, even revelations like the yeah, the great uh, serpent was held right down, but like that he um, wasn't just jealous, but th- th- he didn't understand how, like what was so special about these people. What was so special about Jesus Christ well, that this this thing couldn't you know this this lowly inferior thing couldn't was was better than. Than all of these, than the entire hierarchy of, of angels. Right. So there's a few. So there's a few different ways of. Uh, there's a few different kind of attributions, I guess, to why <laughs> Satan rebelled. Right. Mm-hmm. And they kind of tell the story about the. They tell the story almost of the church or of Judeo Christian, uh, the Judeo Christian mythology or worldview, shifting over time as well. So initially, you had this idea of that that Satan was cast out, um, cast out during the lifetime of humans, right? So, mm-hmm. th- so, so there's that idea though has all kinds of problems with it, which are you know, um, Satan was good. So there was so what was there evil before Satan, right? Or, or, or did Satan bring about all evil? What ha- or did people bring about all evil? Exactly, did the creation of people bring about that because Ex- that's what. Yeah, exactly. So uh, over time, it kind of coalesced into our current view, which sort of has the fall of Satan occurring way, way, way in the past on the, on the second or third day of creation in some tellings, right before mm-hmm. humans were even a, a, a twinkle in God's eye. So <laughs> uh, so the first kind of one, one of the first ones, and this is the one that Marie was hinting at and probably the one that was the most I, I think I think this might be the one that is the most well known to most people mm-hmm. is that um Satan refused to be subservient to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So God said, you know, this is my son and he is uh, basically next in line, right? If if whatever he says, basically think of it, think of it as I'm saying it. And Satan's like, dude, I've been here since day one. Right? You just had this kid with a lady you don't even talk to anymore. And he's going to, I'm not calling her mom. Right. You know what I mean? So Satan was basically saying that I am not going, no, like why should he is a, he's a human, right? Yes. And not only is a human, you've kicked angels out for doing what you did with this lady. So what's the deal? Yeah. What's so going on, man? Yes. Right? Yes. That is what leads to Satan's fall in that telling. Another one mm-hmm. is that when men were, when, when man, when humankind was first created, um, Satan refused to bow down to Adam. He, yes. God, God said, this is the, this is the best creation I ever had. This is the best thing. This is what all of us are going to be in service to is this thing. Um, right. So we want y- you are in service to humans. And Satan was like, why? Like, why would I be in service to these things? You just created them like, you know, th- you got cats. Right. You got cats over here. You can tell me to be subservient to these kind of like hairless monkey dudes. I'd rather be subservient to the cats. Oh my god! But I mean, is it? It's it's kind of the same thing. It is in some ways, it is. right? I mean, the basically Jesus, Adam, or human. The fact was that he created something. God created something that was imperfect, markedly imperfect, right. which made it which made it more des- 
which made it more worthy of being loved and cared after than an angel. And right. In that creation, that's what that's the how I look at this. That's this. That's the whole the whole big problem behind this whole thing. And that's and that's, I think, a part of the story that so really, funnily enough, I think dogma does a really mm-hmm. good job of showing this part of the story. Oh, they they, they actually do. Right. They, they, do, they do a really do. great job of this. Um, imagine, imagine a creator creates you to be perfect, right? You are a perfect, uh, you're a perfect machine. You are a perfect thing. You follow all of their orders to a T. You are never wrong. You are perfect. And then that creator makes something that is less complicated. Um, or I don't know, less complicated. That's getting weird, but make something that has a defect, make something that can yeah, mess up. On purpose. Right. It's going that to can, mess up. That's what they're on earth. That's all they're going to do. Right. It's just <laughs> right. And, mess and basically, up. and basically the creator says, well, that's the whole beauty of them is that if they choose to love me, it's not because I made them do it like you stupid angels. Right. If they choose to love me, it's because they chose to do it. Right. Right. And the angels are like, what are you? T- dude, what? Like you made us this way. It's not our fault. You made us this way. Right. Right. And so that then leads to uh, the fall. Sli- now that slippery slope. Right. And so that is also a part of another of these stories, which is that. Um, and so those assume that that angels basically didn't have free will until God created it for humans in some way. Right. Or, or at least their their free will never got in the way, let's say, of their duties or of their love of God or whatever. Um, the next version of this story is that Satan uh, basically fell away from God because of his use of free will. He saw these problems. He saw um, disparities or whatever and decided, uh, you know, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I think I could be better than you. I think I could do it better than God. And so... That's the other version of the story. Now, all of them have in common one central tenet, which is basically pride. Satan is prideful, and he refuses to kind of bow down to God's commands or his son or whatever. Yes. Right? And it's similar to other stories of gods being cast out of the heavenly sphere. Right? (laughs) The the casting out of Hephaestus. um, Right? Like, this this is a relatively common motif. Yes. Um, Yes. But... But the that's, nail that sticks up surely shall be pounded down. Right. right. And so and so that's that's kind of the story generally of the fall of Satan. And so yeah, but it wasn't just like he didn't just go quietly either, right? No, he created I mean, he caused a war in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, you know, he was kind of a little bit of a Esther, you know, a, a little rabble rouser. A little bit. The original rabble rouser. A little bit. So um that leads us to the next thing. Hmm. Which is, so okay, so Satan falls, and he brings with him a buttload of other angels. Who all think this is a good idea. Yeah, who are right? all so like, we're with original, you. Yeah, this is the original, like, he talks them into it. Hypothetically, I'm, I'm from, my, from what I'm remembering of Milton and everything else, is better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Absolutely. And also, will, also, said yes. in, also said in Dogma. Um. Also said in Dogma. <laughs> You guys, you guys, turn this podcast off, if not for just a moment, and go and watch Dogma. Go watch Dogma. It, it actually is really, really, really good. Totally. Really good. It's absolutely um, good. It's really good, and it's very touching. Um, but then come back to us and finish this. Um, you know, so no, I can't even. So he takes a bunch of angels with him, you know, because again, they're all like, yeah, hey, yeah, no, this Lucifer's guy, you know, he's on to something. This is a good idea, you know. And so again, they all turn, literally, turn their back on God and God's love and God's light. And, and that's what like that, you know, and and then from there, it's just, it's probably not the, the timeshare vacation that was promised them. No. And so you, (laughs) so, so again, you end up with this kind of this hierarchy of demons again, just like there was for angels. And we're going to get into that. But I think what's really interesting is uh, this question, I guess, of, of, okay. So, what are Satan's motives then? Or what are the motives of these evil beings supposed to be? Right? So they fall in, they turn their backs on God, whatever. And in, in my mind, kind of the, the central point of the idea here is God loves them because they're imperfect. Well, we will corrupt them then. Yes. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll show them how imperfect they can be. 
Yes, we will do nothing but prove their imperfectness. Right. And so uh, you end up with this idea, right, of, um, of what's the word, of this area where uh, Satan resides and basically takes the spirits of uh, the damned. Mm-hmm. Now, which what, what were the spirits of the damned doing before this? Exactly. It's super interesting, right? <laughs> and also, it also makes you wonder, like, was hell there before or not? Yeah, was purgatory? Maybe they were just kind of hanging out. They were all queued up. Well, and so and so here's the thing, right? Hell, hell, even in even in modern day, hell is defined by the church as the Catholic Church at least as being a state of definitive self exclusion from communion with God and the blessed. Right. Yes. So it is. It is literally like a. Um, it's it's basically about. You're you're no longer being near God. And so God right. is no longer caring for you. And so the demons have you. you right. Yeah, so, so, yeah, um, you're no longer in his light, just like like the light bringer. That's that is God's love, God's light, sort of the the sovereignty and the the power. And now it's you have you have lost your way. Right. So this is this is this, this yeah. is from the catechism of the Catholic Church. Right. So, quote. Um, Jesus, greatest hits people. Jesus often spoke of Gehenna, of the unquenchable fire reserved for those who, to the end of their lives, refuse to believe and be converted, where both soul and body can be lost. Jesus solemnly proclaims that he will send his angels and they will gather all evildoers and throw them into the furnace of fire, and that he will pronounce the condemnation Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire. The teaching of the church affirms the existence of hell in its eternity. Immediately after death, the souls of those who die in a state of mortal sin descend into hell, where they suffer the punishments of hell, eternal fire. The chief punishment of hell is eternal separation from God, in whom alone man can possess the life and happiness for which he was created and for which he longs. End quote. But again, that's that's interesting, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. It doesn't really answer too much. I mean, so there's there's a fiery, right? Fiery pit. You get your your archetypal fiery pit. But you finally get the ruler of the fiery pit, right? Like now it has an agency. It's got, you know, there's a plan to it. Right. And the the problem is that there's this question of um does God control does God control hell? Does the devil control hell? Right? And so there's some questions. There's some questions here. One idea is that God holds back the souls of the damned until the day of judgment. So there isn't even a hell right now. There's just purgatory. What's the, what's Satan up to? He's chilling, I guess, tricking people into, I don't know, heavy metal. <laughs> right? Oh, you were in that heavy metal music. Yeah. Oh, my God. I did see, by the way, really quick, quick diatribe. I again saw another another millennial wearing a Slayer. No, hoodie, which was so. Which I actually was like, sweet hoodie. Got the full Slayer, had the pentacle and the you know the full. And I was like, nice. Hmm. That's what I'm talking about right there. Some Slayer, my sister. You're all of seventeen, maybe fresh <laughs> cut. Like, had a little bungee in her hair and some sensible shoes. She was adorable, and then she had this hoodie. It's great. Nice. Scaring her parents. So, so he, Slayer. So here's the thing, right? Um, hmm. in, in a lot of interpretations, the devil doesn't actually control hell at all. In some interpretations, the devil is, like, in just the worst part of hell. Like, he's in the hottest, fieriest part. They, like, he's there to be mm -hmm. punished. He's not to do the punishing. It's really from, so actually in the book, in, in, in the Bible, in the book, in the Bible, right? So Revelations mm -hmm. 2010, quote, the devil who deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire, end quote. And then in Ezekiel, it says, quote, I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. You shall be no more forever, end quote. So um, the devil in, in this interpretation is sent to hell for punishment, right? Mm -hmm. But... It is only until the Inferno of Dante that we get this view of the devil controlling hell, of demons controlling hell. Yes. 
right? And that's really where we get this yeah. viewpoint of, say, I mean, it was out there before, right, and whatever, but it's from these visions of hell where theologians are saying, oh, my God, I saw the devil biting on some dude, and there were people at pokers, and, right, like, I, I saw a guy on a spit like a hot dog, and they were that feeding him hot dogs. Um, oh. you know, it's not even a dry heat. It's terrible, right? So um, <laughs> It's a humid heat. The other thing that's really fascinating, actually, is that the, the uh, hell again, is a, is, a, uh, tr- is a translation, right? Like everything else in the Bible, there's a lot of translating mm-hmm. that happened, right? So um, mm-hmm. in the Old Testament, it's the word shoal, which means grave, that is often replaced with hell. In the New mm-hmm. Testament, it's Hades, which means the, the grave, Gehenna, mm-hmm. which means the place of burning, um, or Tartarus, which means a place of darkness. So, Interesting. Th- so this idea but- of there being a, f- a literal hell is from basically the church over time merging its mythology together. Yeah. Well, I think what's interesting is in Dante, the ultimate center of hell is not hot. No. Right? It's not hot in the least. It's freezing cold. That's And to me, like, that was kind of a big inversion of, of what everything that you've sort of archetypally been taught about hell, right? Yeah. But, and it also, again, sort of like... In Dante, it makes sense. Like that is, that it is. It is. You're not. There is no fire. There is no feeling. There is no heat. It's all cold. You're frozen because you have turned. There's no love. There's no anything. You're pretty much out of luck. Mm-hmm. Bum bum bum. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <gasps> um. Oh. So it's it's interesting, right? Really quick. Are we gonna are we gonna are we gonna do are we, are we calling out some ABCs yet? Oh, absolutely we can, Marie. Okay. <laughs> so, as Hi. part of this story, mm-hmm. we wanted to... Uh, we wanted because I got excited. Right. We wanted to do the ABCs here because there's so many demons. In fact, yeah. I have a book here, The Dictionary of Demons by Michelle... Just one? By Michelle Belanger. Um, uh-huh. Or Michelle Belanger. Um, but... Uh, there's, I, I mean, this is like, what is it? How, how many pages is this book? I'm on our First of all, I can't believe you just, just, you have just one book on this. This must be, you're like, this is the first tome that I collected when I was 12. <laughs> I found it at a garage sale I, okay, and then I do have, burnt it with some smudged sage. I do actually have a lot of books. Um, this is like 330 pages. Whew. Amazing. Okay. So, and so we weren't going to get to all of them, so we wanted to kind of call out some, and it'd be kind of fun for you, the listeners, to hear about some of this mythology mm-hmm. and stuff. Okay, so, A is for Abbas, A-B-A-S. All right, I'm gonna, oh. and I'm going to read from this book not, here. Not A-B-B-A. Not, not Abba, but I thought that'd be funny because my mom loves Abba. Um, <gasps> Dora! <laughs> okay, so Abbas, in the sacred magic of Abramelim the mage, Abbas is listed as a demon of lies and trickery. He can be called upon to assist the magician in matters dealing with illusion, as well as spells and invisibility. Um, the demon is, uh, he's the king of the regions below the earth. His province includes the riches of the earth, and he is said to be able to locate and provide all manner of costly metals, including silver and gold. He's also said to be able to cause earthquakes. And he, he also is one of the principal demons in charge of alchemy. Which is why he is one of I think I think he's a cool one. Um. Okay, back to the story here, Marie. Wait a minute. I I have. One. Oh, you have one. I'm so excited, Dude. Marie. Let's hear yours. Dude, first of all, you can't you can't, you can't just throw out one name because first of all, there's like a bazillion and seven of these things, which is again I think the difference between your angels right you got your hierarchy of angels that really they have names but they're not really no four as robust right or as as so i got i got me here uh abaddon okay hebrew the destroyer and the advisor said to be one of the chief demons and is regarded as the destroying angel mm, interesting so abandon came from that probably uh, and then there was one other one that was really pretty good, Abagor. Yeah. Allegedly a warrior demon who commands 60 regions. He is a, a god of Grand Duke of Hell, and he appears in a pleasant form. Ooh. What? A pleasant form? What, he shows up as uh, Adam Scott or something? <laughs> like, what's up with that? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. 
<laughs> oh, nice. Good stuff. I don't know. All right. Okay. So. Oh, one more. One more. <laughs> one more. One more. Uh, Ahazu is a demon. The Caesar demon of the night. Seas as in S I E Z E R. Oh, the Caesar demon of night. Not Caesar. It's not with a U. It's a Caesar. Like he seizes. But it could be. Se- he seizes okay. you in the night. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. I'm I afraid. Don't know either, but I'm just lo- like, what is up with? Okay. Anyways, please continue. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so now we get to this idea of so again, there's some dis- there's some dispute here, right? So, um, mm-hmm. and actually, I think this is a pretty good. Um, so. Uh, this idea again of the of the devil being in hell and ruling there is from people like Dante, Milton, right, um, other places mm-hmm. like that. Um, the only time in the well, a couple of times in the Bible where where kind of Satan or the demon or the the, the dragon or whatever is referenced, but it specifically says that uh, it specifically says that he is uh, basically he he's been shunned from God's presence and now goes about the earth. Ah, so, yes. um, so again, it's kind of this distinguish between our mythology and kind of what it says in the actual book. Right. But, um, but it's interesting now. Um, one of these interesting things is about actually how, um, so, okay. We now have these demons that are out there with Satan, right? They're floating around, whatever. Maybe they're not in heaven. Maybe they're not, in, they're definitely not in heaven. Maybe they're not in hell, oh. but they're somewhere, maybe whatever, hanging out. Who knows? This led to, uh, again, this... They may have a passport. They may not. We're not too sure. Right. Are they legal? They may not be legal. They might just be, yeah. Probably. So we had this idea about um, this classification of angels, and it led to other theologians saying, well, what about demons? There must be a classification of them as well. And in particular, this became important when uh, talking about exorcisms. Mm. Because it was thought to be very important when exorcising a demon to... Uh, first off, to know kind of your enemy, right? To know what what angel or what heavenly thing or whatever has power over them, right? Obviously the Lord, but what is their, like, you know, their nemesis angel, right? So, you know, right. Venom has Spider-Man, Kingpin has Daredevil, right? Um, <laughs> same, Literally same kind of idea, right? Nice. And actually that's where a lot of our names of angels come from. Um, the few that we do have are from these kind of things, these stories about an exorcist saying, you know, who is your chief rival or whatever? And then they give the name of an angel. 